I'm doing a video on replacing the MSD or manual service disconnect lever on my 2019 Bolt. I've seen enough, probably about a half a dozen complaints on the forum where people lose power and get a bunch of codes and everything and they're unable to drive and they have to get their car towed and the problem ended up being the MSD. Um, I know that there was a problem in a certain batch, a certain date range, and I know that my car falls within that range. So since there's no recall on it and you can't get it replaced unless there's a problem, I went ahead and ordered it. And the new part is sitting right here. Um, if you order the part, the place you order it from may tell you it's on national back order. You can't get it right now. But if you can get wherever you order to actually place the order through GM, it seems to come in in about two weeks. I only had to wait about two weeks for mine to come in. Uh, so you can get them and you can do this yourself. What I've done right now is I've turned the car off, closed the doors, popped the hood, and I'm waiting about 10 minutes for the computer to shut down or go idle and then I'll disconnect the battery, which you have to do before you replace this MSD. So. I'll pick up on the video once I've disconnected the battery. Here is the new MSD. I took it out of the bag so we can get a close-up of the writing that's on the actual fuse. Uh, we'll compare that to the old one once I get it out. But this is the new one. And if you flip it over, uh, you can see all the part number information here. Uh, so we can see the numbers on it. 2429-4004 is the new part number. So I'll go on with the installation from here. I've disconnected the negative battery cable um, and after that I think I'm gonna wait a few more minutes just to make sure any residual power has left the system then I'll go to the next step. Alright to get the seat up is really easy if you reach under the seat with your finger in this little indent right here, you can find these two latches and they both move toward the driver's side of the car. You can just pop these back and lift the seat right up. I have the seat just propped up with my duster there because there's no reason to take it all the way out. We just we have plenty of clearance to get the switch out and I'll show you how to do that next. All right, this part of the video might be a little shaky because it's going to be hard to video while doing this, but it should be really easy without videoing it. I have my lineman gloves on here, and what you have to do is pull up on this red tab right here. So let me see if I can get my thumb in there. Pull up on that, and then you squeeze right here on this little piece. Squeeze right here. And when you squeeze there, you should be able to pull up on the lever. And as you pull up on the lever, it pops the switch right out. So, and then you just pull up and out. And you can see the contacts down in there and everything where the new one goes. But this just, once you pull up on the lever, you have to give it a little bit of force to pull it out the rest of the way. Okay, here we have the two levers, and this is the old one on the left, which, surprising to me, has the same part number, 2429-4004. Um, but the manufacturer date on the old one is January 5th, 19, and on the new one, it's March 30th, 20. Um, so, I don't know if you have this part number already if it should be okay but this is the new part number so me replacing this may have been completely unnecessary um, I know that cars older than mine um, had a different part number so this may already be the good part number I'm not sure here's the new one and the new one has a they put markings on it uh, little blue check mark and a black dot. I don't know if that means it's been tested or what, but I'll put the new one in it anyway. Um, even though I, I already had the new part number in my car, even though my car was in the date range of ones that should be replaced according to the Korean recall. 
um, there's a recall in for cars built in Korea for certain dates so anyway I'll put the new one in and uh, I'm not going to film putting the new one in because it comes out reverse of how it went in you basically push this down into the slot to seat it and then push the lever hard to do this with one hand push the lever down like this one then once it's down and clicks in place you push this red clip closed and then the new one's in so I'll do that now all right so this will be the first startup after I installed the new MSD cross my fingers start it up looks okay um, the reason I said cross my fingers is because if you do things in the wrong order and you like try to remove that switch before disconnecting the battery you'll get all sorts of codes and from what I hear you may not even be able to reset those codes with uh, even a regular scan tool you might need GM to do it um, and the theory behind that or not the theory but the procedure is disconnect the battery to make the the computer's the brain of the car brain dead basically so that it doesn't know what's going on you replace the switch and by the time you put the new one back in there there's still no power on it by the time you reconnect the battery it can't see the difference between the old switch and the new one it just thinks everything's fine so hopefully everything will be okay I'm gonna go on a short test drive now make sure everything checks out back from the short drive tested everything out couple full throttle acceleration test everything checks out fine there was one strange anomaly when I started it the first time it said apply brake to shifts from park and I'm like well my foot is on the brake and so I pressed my foot down a little harder tried it again and I got the same message apply brake to shift from park so I took my foot completely off the brake and put it back on and then that time it worked so maybe that's some kind of idiosyncrasy with after you disconnect the battery and hook it back up it has to get in sync or something I did shut it off after that got out let the car sit for a little while and got back in and tried it again and it didn't complain about that again so I just put my foot on the brake and pressed the start button and everything was fine but the first time I got that message which was a little weird but that was the only thing that was strange all my settings radio station temperature for the HVAC system everything remained so I didn't even have to reset anything after the battery disconnect. I said I would put in a picture or a video of the old part, the actual fuse. So taking that now, they look pretty much the same to me, but I'll have to compare them after I get the videos done. Um, as I said, the old part number that I took out was the same part number, but there very well could have been a bad batch of them based on date. Um, so I guess I'm happy that I got a newer um, manufacturer date on this uh, new part. But worst case, I'll have a spare. I'll probably put this in the, in the bag that it came in down there and just store it in the car so I'll have a spare. Um, but I guess I feel a little better that it's a it's a newer manufacturer date so if they did correct some kind of problem with a bad batch of fuses then I should be good now um, in all honesty it's the same part number so uh, that might indicate that they didn't change anything and have to um, get a new part number for a newer batch but anyway I feel better having the newer one in, in there and like I said I'll probably just take this and Put it in the back where the charge cable goes and just have a spare.